Hello and welcome to episode five of Science on a Shoestring with Mr. S. Today I've been inspired by the birds tweeting in my back garden. You might be able to hear them. Oh, they've gone quiet now. But anyway, this investigation is inspired by not only the birds, but the fact that in year six we need to learn about evolution and inheritance. And some of the things that we need to learn about that are to recognise that living things have changed over time and also identify how animals and plants are adapted to suit their environment in different ways. So evolution is a really big important topic. We know from the evidence that animals have changed over time to adapt to their environment. If they don't do that, and same with plants, if they don't do that, then they will die out. So all living things need to change. The fact that we've got our hands with our thumbs, our thumbs, particularly some muscles within our thumbs, are said to be one of the key developments in our evolution. I'm fascinated by this fact that we've changed and adapted and that all living things are suited for their environments. So with that in mind, this activity is about bird beaks and you're going to need the following items because this is science on a shoestring with Mr. S. It's all about things that you can find around the house to do the science. So this is what I've done with mine. These things, they're called pipe cleaners, but they're also known as art straws. I've got some rice, some sultanas. Don't need too many. These are lettuce seeds, but you can use all sorts of different types of seeds. I'm just going to use some fennel seeds for this investigation. But the idea is you've got a number of different items and they are going to act as your seeds. So if you imagine a bird needs food to survive, like all living things, it needs to do a number of different processes. One of those is nutrition, and that is to take in energy, is to take in food, so that animal or plant can use that as energy. Energy can only be converted, so we convert it from the food that we eat, or the bird eats in this case. You can't create energy or destroy it. To represent our bird beak then, some tongs, some tweezers, now, of course, it goes without saying these are sharp and also, particularly with the tweezers, we need to be careful with our hygiene. Make sure that these have been cleaned before and that they're cleaned afterwards as well, of course, because people do use them and they use them up the nose. So you don't really want dirty tweezers. You need to clean them first. Two spoons. I've used teaspoons here. Maybe you could try it with tablespoons. Straws. Now, originally, I thought of using chopsticks for this activity. I didn't have any chopsticks, so I had to improvise, and I've used two straws. So learning how to use chopsticks is a bit of an art in itself. They might work differently, but that only gives us room to think about different kinds of animals. Two flat stones. These are from my garden, used in a similar sort of way for picking up. A clothes peg from the washing line. And there are lots of different things that you could use around the house for this. So with the magic of video editing, I'm ready to investigate. At the end of this video, I can hear some birds in the background. At the end of this video, there is a table which you might want to use or adapt to record your results. The idea is you make a prediction as to which tool representing the bird's beak is going to be the best at picking up which different example of a seed or an item, a twig, for example. In this case, the pipe cleaners, or the arch drawers as they're also known. My prediction is that the best tool to pick these up with will be a small implement such as the tweezers. So I make a prediction and then I test it out. That is the basis of scientific inquiry. You have an idea about something, you go and test it out. But we've got to try all of the different options before we come to a conclusion about what was best. So I'll try it with, firstly, a large implement, such as the tongs. So some bird's beaks will be in this sort of shape. Think about what might not be so ideal. So I'll try my straws this time. Keep coming back to our tweezers. Seem ideal for the job. Now let's try it with some fennel seeds. My prediction, again, is that it's going to be a much smaller tool will be best at this because 
these tweezers, I've got a really fine point and I can pick up individual seeds. So think about it, small seeds, which animal is going to be best suited? I would say a small bird with a small, sharp beak. So now we're thinking more scientifically about it and relating it to the actual animal itself. My prediction is that these aren't going to be very effective for it. Now I've got something larger. Some animals are going to be eating larger seeds, but also some animals, some birds, are going to be eating larger prey now. So we start to think about birds of prey, for example. And as the items get larger, it's likely that the beak is going to need to be larger as well. So adaptation. All animals are adapted to the environment in which they live in. They need to be, otherwise they wouldn't survive. Now, as we start thinking about larger prey, many birds prey, that's P-R-E-Y, not to be confused with P-R-A-Y, are able to identify small creatures or even large creatures and swoop in and carry those off as food. Where large birds are adapted to eat much larger animals than small mice or voles or things like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the investigation. Use what you can find around the house. This is science on a shoestring with Mr. S. But also be very careful in what you choose and always ask for permission before you take anything or use anything. And remember hygiene. Let me know what you find. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>